Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Mage the Ascension the Victorian Age. This is a very special episode that's going to be audio only that is just uh, myself and Christine because Christine is going on a seeking for Evelyn. For those uninitiated, a seeking is a vision quest that a mage undertakes in order to greater their understanding of the cosmos and their connection to it, aka to raise their dots in Arete, uh, what they use to make magic happen. Uh, so joining me tonight, as I said, is Christine. Hi, Christine. How's it going? Oh, not too bad. It is a fairly relaxed evening, which is very nice. Uh, well, this is kind of I, a nice way to end out the workday. <laughs> And dork day the work day yeah it's it's so funny with these things because i'm always quite a bit more nervous than i think the players are but you said that you you're a little nervous because you've actually done one of these before about five six years ago and i ran you through a, a mage the essential well, and that was the larp one like it was a little different and yeah no i'm very anxious because i just don't really know what to expect and i and there's that sense of just not wanting to screw it up and not wanting to miss cues and not wanting to give the wrong response type thing that's fair because like Failure is built into these because mm. there is always that option for failure, but I really don't want to fail this because I want to get to the next level and I want to be able to do cool shit. So well, there's, a, there's a good chance. You got a 50 50 chance on this. Basically you'll pass or you'll fail. Um, so you've got your character sheet out. You've got your dice out. You probably won't need your dice because this is a narrative based thing rather than a, than a dice. Do mechanics I need my thing. dice? Cause I don't have my dice out. <laughs> you know what? I don't think you do. I don't think okay. you do. If you'd like worst to have them out for comfort. Worst comes to worst, they're on the shelf. Okay. Worst no, comes to worst, okay. they're on the shelf. All right. Uh, do you have any questions or comments about Evelyn before we begin? Um. No. Should I go ahead and like just introduce her though? For yeah, go ahead. Initially. Um. So yeah. So I'm Christine. Um. I use she/her pronouns, and I am playing Dr. Evelyn Taylor in our Victorian Mage game. Uh. She is our Society of Ether member. And is very much the mad scientist type. Fair. Uh, all right. And um, I've, I'm your storyteller, Kelly. I use he and him. And uh, if you're ready, then I think I'm ready as well. Let's just dive right in. All right. Let's do it. It's been several weeks since your departure from London. And in that time, Dr. Evelyn Taylor has found herself at somewhat of a wit's end, with all of the excitement that occurred in just a single week, finding courage to leave the technocracy and your husband, re-meeting him, having numerous gunfights, arsons, and all manner of magical mayhem around jolly old London. You found yourself thrust into the middle of a cat and mouse game between an ancient evil and your newfound friends only to be whisked away to the streets of Paris at the last moment. Here with your new mentor, Dr. Vivian Freeman, you found, well, the freedom that you were hoping for. But in that freedom, something, you found something of a loss. Direction is difficult. For the last, well, as long as you can remember, you would wander the streets of Paris during the daylight, trying to figure out something to focus your energies toward. Our story today takes place as you sort through the pages of one of the broadsheet periodicals sold on the street corners. There are both French and English newspapers here, and I'm not certain if Evelyn speaks very good French, but regardless, the newspaper that you're pouring through causes you no difficulty. As you flip through it, you see an advertisement at the back. It jumps out at you. Seeking an assistant for a scientific experiment. Ideally, a female, late 20s, English speaking. Pay up front, full credit. Well... What more could you do than jump at the chance? There was an address. And soon you find yourself sitting outside of a small outdoor cafe in Trocadero Square. At the appointed time, a woman approaches you and leans in and in, in very poor 
French. Says, Excusez-moi? Pardon? Uh, uh, she asks you in French whether or not you speak English. Um, she'll respond in French that yes, she does. Oui. Parlez-vous anglais? She smiles, and she's um, kind of a, a severe woman with a, a bit of a large forehead, curls around the side of her face, and a very pointy nose, uh, kind of a uh, sharp chin, but but a weak sharp t- chin, kind of recessed into her face, and probably pushing her, um, pushing her late 50s, 60s maybe. She'll smile and say, in a slight Scottish accent, Thank goodness. Out of all the languages that I speak, French was never one of the best ones. Not at all. Um, French is not exactly my strong suit either. Oh. American? Canadian. Oh. My apologies, love. Didn't mean to insult. You didn't. Given that you're here at the appointed time, I imagine that you're the assistant. You saw my ad. I did. I came to see what it was about. Ah, I'm going to be conducting a bit of an experiment. I was hoping that uh, I could use a woman's touch, though. Someone with, with small hands. What it was either you or of... perhaps a child. Oh, and let me, let me see your hands, love. Oh, those are She'll pretty small. Show her hands, which she is a very delicate featured, fragile looking person. Overall, she does not look strong or particularly sturdy. And what's your focus in? Oh, you know what? My apologies. I'm being, intelli- I'm being terribly rude. My name's Mary. You could call me Miss Mary Somerville. It's a pleasure to, to meet you, Miss. Do you prefer Somerville or Miss Mary? If we're going to be working together, I suppose that Mary will have to suffice. Wonderful. Uh, I'm Dr. Evelyn Taylor. Doctor? Oh, well, that I should be graced by another woman, Doctor. I like to lay claim to it. <laughs> I imagine so. Well, what sort of experiment are you looking at doing? What sort of field? Well, my primary field is uh, a bit all over the place, but what I have detected is uh, I'm trying to detect variations in the magnetic properties of the light spectrum, particularly the violet spectrum. I've been noticing that given the particularities and volatiles in Paris's air and the unique geography and elevation of Paris. I should be able to complete a bit of an experiment that I always meant to, but I've had trouble with it. Luckily enough, today I've got an experiment set up nearby and um, my calculations... You need another pair of hands. I do need another pair of hands. Luckily, just the two of us. And if we get there soon enough... Um, it shouldn't be more than another hour or two before the experiment should take place, which is fortunate, because if it doesn't happen today, it will be um, oh, at least another year. At my age, I might not quite live specific to see it. circumstances. Then, oh, looking for a bit of um, a bit of some changes in the ionosphere. Uh, we're going to be at the precise location, away from the sun that we should be getting the most of the radiation, enough to pierce any cloud cover that we would have, which given that I sense a storm coming, it's probably good. It is my theory that using magnetics, we can draw things forth and actually see projections coming across the magnetosphere. Using solar radiation, of course. I've borrowed... um, It's... 
Now, you yourself. Taylor. I know the name, actually. You're the chemist. That is correct. I have dabbled with magnets, so. Material scientist would be perfect for what I'm looking to do. Which is good. Well, the pay will be reasonable and fair. And I'll double it if we manage to get anything useful out of this. But you have to follow my instruction to the letter. I think I can do that. Good. At the very least, it's only for a couple of hours. If you disagree with me after that, then eh, we go our separate ways. Well, as long as you don't uh, intend to do anything particularly odd, like the druids of old or some such nonsense, I am sure <laughs> we will be just fine. Well, I mean, I suppose we're both using star charts. We're both doing things on specific dates. I mean, mine's on the, uh, well, on the, uh, the spring it's equinox. Based upon distance and orbit and Aye. planetary rotation more than anything. Aye, it absolutely is. And of course... They happen to apply it to a date. Mm-hmm. And we can't forget elevation. And as she says that, a little bit of a chill will go down your spine for a reason you don't quite know yet. Hmm. Shall we now? Certainly. My research station is not far from here. I'm lucky that I happen to have made some friends in the Royal Academy during my time as a scientist. It, it allowed me it's to always get... always good uh, to have resources. Mm-hmm. Special dispensation, as they say. Now that is fancy. Shall we? Uh, Evelyn will stand from her seat and gather her bag and her oh. umbrella. Hmm. She's oh, not going anywhere without that. You'll probably be needing that. I have a feeling that it's going to storm a bit. It does seem a slightly chance of rain, but it's more that I've learned to not go anywhere without it. And as you say that, a little drop of water is going to hit you on the back of the hand. Yeah. Before long, you'll make your way to her research station, which, from where you are, is less than a kilometer away. And with every step toward it, the sinking feeling in your gut grows a little deeper. For before long, you stand at the base of the most French symbol possible the Eiffel Tower. If we've paused, Evelyn oh. will raise her eyebrows, turn and look at her companion, and now that truly is special dispensation. Elevation is important. And then you climb into a rattly cage elevator and begin ascending. Can you please look at your character sheet under the flaws mm -hmm. section? Oh shit. <laughs> What flaw do you have? Uh, fear of heights. Phobia. Perfect. All right. So the cage rattles you up and you continue to climb over Paris. It is a gorgeous sight in the late afternoon. You can see the sun beginning to dip red in the horizon, casting a brilliant hue across all of Paris. I think she's going to have to, like, hold on to her. She's going to, like, be gripping her umbrella tightly. Are you all right? Yes, it's, uh, not often been this high up. It's... Ah, well, you won't have to worry about that. It's perfectly safe. Oh, I'm sure. Doesn't change the fact that it's rather high and feels quite nervous. <laughs> I suppose we all have our weaknesses. 
It is to be human. <laughs> Eventually, the cage finishes its ascent, and you find yourself at the very top of the Eiffel Tower at the viewing deck. She pulls open the cage with a pair of gloved hands and leads you out to where you can see that there is a large contraption set up with wires feeding up onto the floor above the, the apartment level of the Eiffel Tower. Now here, taking a look at this, you're going to immediately kind of understand what you're looking at. It looks like an enlarged, very almost prototypical version of a... Um, of a spectrometer something that okay. is used for for using light waves and particle waves to basically using light to determine the particles of something mm -hmm. um i don't know if you've ever used one in real life but they're actually really interesting and really boring at the same time i've never actually used one but i have seen it referenced in research quite often um it is used definitely in stuff like archaeology etc absolutely i used studied. it in earth sciences and um, it's. So I've seen the results of it in reports and whatnot, but never actually used one myself. Okay. So, basically, what it's going to do is is going to draw energy in and is going to basically like reveal different things inside of the spectrum. Um, however, there are a couple of other things attached to this. You can see that on either side of it, it is an immense Tesla coil, seeming to almost draw energy in from its surrounding area before it coalesces into these little arcs of electricity. Okay. As well as a network of cables that loop up, up, up toward the second floor where there are a series of basically like radar arrays and not dishes, but uh, almost like old school radars, the kind that look almost like they're grills. Okay. So this should be a pretty easy procedure. What I'd like you to do, with your knowledge of chemistry and material sciences, I want you to monitor the spectrometer and make sure that whatever happens, we stay exactly on these frequencies. Don't change any of the diodes, don't change any of the, any of the components. Use the dials and things like that if you need to tune anything. But beyond that, you're just going to be providing me readings through this funnel. And you can see that there is like a funnel system, like to go to like a speaking tube that's been set up. So basically she needs me to make adjustments to keep a dial at the right spot. Basically tuning a radio. Okay. And just give me readings. Listen to me when I speak to you. All right. Do you have any questions? Um, Christine can't think of any, but I'm sure Evelyn will pepper her with several questions about the various things. Of like, where are you getting the power from? Is it coming from lightning source? Like, Tesla uh, coil, we, et cetera, et cetera. We've got an Which, internal... I think that's reminding her of Dr. Willie right now, because that's the last time she saw all this sort of setup. Mm -hmm. It's like, hmm... She's looking around for bodies. <laughs> Nothing like that. We've got an internal battery that we've set up. As well, we're drawing from the, the city's power grid. It's scant, but honestly, this doesn't require too much power. Although, it might get a bit heated if a storm rolls in. You never know. That's honestly my hope, is that the Just apex of the hour... All the metal full flooring etc oh you'll be fine the metal dis the, the distribution of a lightning strike um eiffel designed it for that however word of warning if you're looking to do more field science getting rubber so rubber sold shoes might not be a bad idea i think i might very well yes hmm all right. Well, the hour approaches. I look forward to working with you on this one, Dr. Taylor. Uh, Evelyn? Evie? What do you prefer? Evelyn. Evelyn. Well, let's get it right the first time, because if not, it's going to be at least a year before we'll be back in this situation. Maybe five. All right. 
Stay on the dial. Stay on the dial. With that, she ascends to the upper floor. And soon Evelyn's going to kind of roll her sleeves up out of the way. and Rolling your sleeves up, you'll find them quickly plastered to your pale arms as a storm rolls in. Beats of rain are going to smack down like waves onto the top of the Eiffel Tower, buffeting you. One of the tubes nearby you will alight with the sound of a Scottish voice. We should be getting close now! Monitor the dials! What are we at now? There should be a red, a green, and a blue! Uh, Evelyn will call back all the numbers in the order that she asked for them, basically. So, so basically, like looking at the material components of the air, nothing there is particularly unusual. It seems like everything that's there, yeah, it seems a lot of carbon, uh, a lot of, you know, etc. Going through the list of like mm -hmm. what elements would be randomly in the air as well. And um, which the during tube. all this, Evelyn is going to try and be like mentally dissecting it a little bit. Like she wants to understand what's happening here and what maybe try and figure out what exactly she's trying to learn from this. Mm -hmm. So, as you are monitoring that, she says, At the top of this, when we get through it all, at the very top, when those readings synchronize into red and blue into that nice purple space there. I know that's not technically the way that it works, but I've kind of organized it so that it should function about the same. Once we hit into the violet rays of the spectrum, we should be able to do something here using the coils. Not unlike Aurora Borealis. We should be able to use the electricity from here as well as the lingering rays coming through to magnetically charge the atmosphere above the tower. It'll be, if you don't mind me saying, one hell of a light show. Well, let's do our best to put a show on for Paris then. Good and old Paris. I knew we'd get along. And with that, the rain and the storm roll in. The sun continues to dip below the horizon till its dying light is all that is kind of refracting through the cloud cover. However, no matter how thick the clouds get, that streak of red along the horizon remains just as bright. You are buffeted and you are slung around the top of the tower. You can see that all throughout that, the meters are flashing red and blue and green. The green is very low and occasionally will spike and then drop. The red and the blue slowly rising in different peaks until they're getting near each other. Now, as you're looking at this device, however, you will see that it's, it's covered in, in bits of, in, in bits of cloth, in bits of um, rough adhesive strips, basically, like what we would consider today to be duct tape, but something akin to that. Um, and as you are looking down, um, there is going to be a gust of wind and you are going to hear this sound as a bit it's a bit of well a bit of a strip breaks away from a nearby coil and you'll hear as one of the cables uh, tumbles over the edge of the tower and you're going to see the red and the blue lines instead of the spectrograph are going to keep going but the green is going to is going to completely bottom out okay I think I need to get that cable back in place then. What's wrong? I heard something. Cable's broken loose. What are the What are the readings now? Green's bottomed. 
Green's irrelevant. We don't need green. We just need red and blue. All right. They're still going. Tell me when they reach ten. Seven. Will do. Six. Seven. 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 Eight. 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 Sitting around eight. Nine. 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 Ten. That's ten. 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 Are we at ten? Solidly ten. Here we go. And she pulls the lever. Suddenly, (laughs) lightning streaks from one Tesla coil to another. And then arcs up through a series of conduits and relays up to the tip of the tower where a network of electricity (laughs) will come down in an immense net around the tower, almost like a sprinkler dropping water. And nothing happens. The electricity falls, and it's in these brilliant blue plumes. Just give it time. We've got 60 seconds. Hold. What do you do? I will hold, I guess. Keeping an eye carefully on all the instruments, and unless, like, Obviously, she's going to follow instructions, but if she has any flashes of brilliance of, like, adjusting something will help or something like that, she might try that. So If it looking, starts getting very desperate feeling. Looking at uh, what you are seeing here, uh, as the network continues to extend around the side of the tower. Nothing appears to be happening. You can sense a sequence, a harmonization. It's like, it's like there's nothing. It's trying to draw elements out of the atmosphere here, using the elements that are keyed into that spectrometer. But it's not connected. It's, it's, looking at this, you look down and even as she's saying, hold, it'll pull something out. To you, looking at this, it makes you think that she is reacting almost like a um, like a gold panner at a dry stream. Something will happen. You have to just keep trying type thing. Exactly. You're looking at these levels, and while there's plenty of levels inside of here, And you can see the electricity arcing down in these beautiful patterns. There doesn't appear to be anything here that is resonating. Whatever that green lever was, or the the green diode, perhaps that was monitoring something. You might be able to find something else if you try to rewire something here, but you have very little time, and she's telling you not to. But then again, this isn't your area of expertise. You're not a forces mage. This is true. I think... If if it really, really seems to her like it, it's not going to pick up anything from the way it's set up... If you, if you had that other diode, you might be able to figure it out, but you don't have access to that color. Would, do you think that it would make sense to her to try and reconnect that wire as quickly as she could? I, I think that might be a good method. All right, then I think she is going to do that. Okay. As you go and head to the edge of the tower's viewing deck, you can see the cable hanging over the edge from where it's wrapped around one of the supports. You'll have to lean out to get it, to unhook it. <sighs> Do you want me to actually make a roll for that, then? Because that is a willpower roll. I'm supposed to get, like, three successes. Do you think that she'd be able to try it? Or do you want to get your dice? I... I feel like she could push through, because 
I mean, she's already done so much just for her ability to do science and have it in her name. She's already flouted so much that she, I feel like she should be able to push aside her phobia for a moment in the height and excitement and anxiety Basically, she would spend willpower. Stress of the situation. Yeah. Okay. So, gritting your teeth, you swing your leg over the edge. Oh, God. <laughs> I think she she will just kind of go for it. Evelyn, what are you doing? I need you to monitor the dials. I think we're missing something. We're going to get nothing. Swinging yourself over the edge in hard-soled boots, there is a moment where you put your foot down on the rough, slick metal. And the next thing you know, you are tumbling. And you'll hear as your umbrella, capped in one hand, is going to be the only thing that catches you on the railing. And you find yourself one leg out, one leg on the railing, your ass dangling over the precipice of dune, holding onto your umbrella like an old, well, what to us would be an old, like a Laurel and Hardy skit. And nearby you, whipping to and fro, is the end of the cable that came untethered. I think she'll shriek a little and, oh dear lord, and just try her best to grab that. All right. Grabbing it, you will shakily climb back over the edge. Barely 30 seconds left in this, in this moment. Plug it in and then watch. Adjust the dials as necessary. All right. As you were looking at now, these meters don't just go to 10. These meters go much higher. And as you were looking right now, red and blue were sitting around 15, 16 out of 100, perhaps. The meter is marked to keep them, to keep it registered between 10 and 20 for these, but they go much higher. As you plug it in, there is a bit of a zolt uh, that reconnects. You'll feel your hair stand on end as the electricity pours through you as you connect the wires again, your hands still slick, and you almost find yourself blown back by the direct current, but enough that it makes your heart seize up for a moment. Um, Somehow you're able to drop it against all odds. Looking down, you can see that green, the green meter, is sitting at 99 out of 100. Now I was told to keep it between 10 and 20. You were told to, to monitor between 10 and 20 for the other one. Yeah. Do That's I what the have... meter is showing. Looking looking left and right, basically what is being the current the current that is being fed in to the up up above you. Um, basically you can see that there are three diodes. One for each of the colors. Presently, the diodes for red and blue are on, green is off because it, it like a surge protector, it disconnected the circuit went went dead when it was disconnected um so it is not feeding energy but the meter is running okay i guess i'm just thinking whatever her intuition is which is trained through her academics and science and her very high perception and intelligence what seems like the best course of action whatever is happening here which you can see because i am not a scientist so explaining this is very layman no. and is very weak but what's happening is she's expecting that there is going to be at least a certain amount of magnetically affectable material in the air from two different areas of the magnetosphere mm -hmm. now a third one that is also monitored because it is present is registering at five times the amount or higher of what she is thinking is going to register. Something that she was not even anticipating being a factor. Okay. So there's two ways to do this. You could either see if you could harmonize all three. Maybe that would boost the initial signal. 
or you uh, it could probably shut the other two off and just turn the high voltage one on, the high powered option on, and hope for the best. I feel like maybe trying to harmonize might be the best. Try to harmonize? Okay. Uh, Do you think so? <laughs> feel free to ask any questions. I just don't know what to choose. Um, she might try kind of shouting the information a bit towards the tubes as she's thinking it. Whatever you do, the green, the green is a harmonic scale that it, it, it it's background radiation. It's irrelevant. Stick to red and blue. All it'll do if you if you combine that with them is confuse it. Hmm. There's all number of phantom lights that people have reported here over the years. I want to be able to pull them out. Are you sure it's not green? It's reading very high. Or if you dismissed it in advance. Everywhere has that type of energy. That would mean that this place isn't special at all. Yeah, we're not getting anything. Five. Choose. <laughs> lightning. You have very little time left. Lightning is going to strike overhead, completely cutting out her voice. God. What do you do? <sighs> Taking a look at this. background radiation I mean the other meters are swelling slightly with that lightning strike the lightning strike that hits the top of the tower you can see that all of the diodes and conduits begin to hum and vibrate some of the electricity arcs through the air it might be enough you might just have to ride out the storm Or you could mix them and see what happens. Or you could say, screw it. And see what happens if you put all of the power into the high one. Ooh. I feel like I want to try mixing them and see what happens. What's your reasoning? We had nothing without green. And the other two were steady, but nothing happened. So yeah, we could throw them off and only look at green. But quite often when you mix something, something fantastic happens. I'm thinking of her like chemistry type thing. Okay. Right, with like all of her bonding aspects and things like that creating something new out of mixture but at the same point there she's looking for something in specific <sighs> this was really hard choice <laughs> three two one let's go for a mixture you turn on the green diode there is a flash and suddenly you are bombarded with energy from the Tesla coils. You feel it dance over your flesh. The waves of electricity will course over your skin like water. And you actually will see bits of the rivulets of water burn off of you as the network, as the network of electrical pulses showering through the air are suddenly going to coalesce like watching an invisible person walk underneath a waterfall you will suddenly see dozens of shapes emerge from around the tower 
glowing in spectral light. Things that were hidden just beyond the perceptions of reality. Jellyfish flying through the air. People sailing in zeppelins. A man peddling in what looks like one of Da Vinci's flying machines. And you'll be seeing all of this. I think Evelyn's laughing slightly in shock. Something all of this. Kind of worked. <laughs> I asked you not to do that. Suddenly, you see Mary standing beside you. Yeah, but it worked. All of this is real. You see it. It's all located just on the other side. Oh, come now. Other Earth side is of what? On the other side of the universe. On the other side of all the universes. Earth is just one element in a greater periodic table. Remember, everything is an axis. Everything is a spectrum. Keep diving, Dr. Taylor. And you will recognize her for uh, just a moment and see this old, wizened woman smiling at you and will have a flashback to you in in your school days reading a copy of the morning post back in 72 so early school days just when you were starting to get into science and an obituary Whatever difficulty we might experience in the middle of the 19th century in choosing a king of science, there will be no question, whatever, as to the queen of science. It is with sad hearts that we say goodbye to Mary Somerville. I wish you luck in all of your endeavors, lass. Happy to leave it in good hands. The world. She gives you a wink. I'll do my best. And as you say that, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, a French voice will shock you out of this moment of confusion and elation. Wind buffets your face, and you can see thick rain clouds over all of Paris. Excuse me? Madame? Mademoiselle? Uh, a, a storm uh, is coming? Uh, everyone should probably descend the tower? Oh, of, of course. Uh, Are you all right? You seem to be lost in thought. Um, yeah, just thought, lost in thoughts being this high up. And she's going to kind of look around a bit, just trying to place what the hell just happened. You feel amazing. Do you, uh, do you like heights? No, not normally, no. There's something beautiful about this site, isn't there? Very much so. And with that, I think as you look over the city, you should probably fill in that fourth dot. <laughs> All right. Whew. So, 
Uh, I apologize if any of that was confusing at all. Trying to couch it in pseudoscientific Victorian techno babble uh, was a bit difficult, and it went it went very much uh, the original idea that I had for you for this uh, was that we were going to be going in and doing like a Frankenstein thing, but yeah. you and I had discussed that so much that you wanted to kind of lean into the the Mary Shelley type of vibe that I was like, there's no challenge in a seeking where you already know what answer we're kind of pushing you toward. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to give well, you... Well, I will hmm. say what came to mind the moment you were saying mix three was, oh, is this how I'm mixing entropy, matter, and spirit? It Type might be. Thing? That's where yeah. it kind of came to mind. I was like, well, do I actually want to focus on one thing? Because I actually want to focus on multiple things as a character. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I would suggest kind of buying us done so so i'm going to pick your yeah. new resonance okay uh i am going to pick uh you're going to take i think static um uh, and i'm just looking up the exact word for it i'm going to say static I'll, I'll let you pick which version of the word but merging combining or unifying i feel like merging Maybe. merging or melding. Yeah, because I feel like that's kind of the intent of it, is that that's where she's planning to go. So unifying is not necessarily... Or mixing. I feel like merging kind of works well, because she's going to try and push a lot of things together. Okay, so we'll do... Merge things we'll into do... a new whole, essentially. And I feel like it's it's more of a... Is it more of a static merging or more of a dynamic merging, the result of this? Because it was acting on instinct, but it was too... It's kind of a hard one, right? Because it was definitely one of those two. It's not an entropic. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. What... That's one thing I realized or, um, when I was looking through me. stuff. I'll, is I'll let you don't do have merging my or harmonizing. Written down. Merging or harmonizing. Um, maybe a harmonizing. Okay, so take take. She's going to try and bring things to work together. Mm -hmm. So bringing them into harmony together instead of like oil and water. Yeah, that sounds good. So why don't you go ahead and put separate. that in? Uh, and okay. you can go ahead and you can spend all of your experience points. Excellent. Yes, so that means that you can purchase up uh, up to four dots of anything, and it'll be there by next session. That's exciting. Uh -huh. um, actually, a quick question for you. Yes. Is that I realized I don't have an initial resonance written down mm -hmm. on my sheet. Do you remember what mine was? Did I have uh, one? I don't know if you came up with one, so you probably should do that before first time or for the next game. Okay. I will ask so, you for some suggestions, potentially. Absolutely. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in a bit. The next but, time. Uh, so, yeah, so next time. Uh, that is going to be your seeking for tonight. How do you feel? That was fun. I really was enjoyed fun? that. That was, was really good? good? Okay. I'm glad. Yeah, that was I'm glad. I was feeling a little that. lost with some of the science jargon, and I was like, I had to stop a couple times to double check like locations in Paris that did or did not exist. I was actually originally it was going to be a, an experiment with Madame Curie, but uh, but Madame Curie uh, did not get the Nobel Prize until 1910. As it turned out, I, I misjudged my dates when I was doing research because uh, I was like, oh, that's obviously the same era. She's like the 1960s or the 1860s. No, she's not. Kelly, learn to use Google before you <laughs> have everything written in your book. Um, Fair. Yeah. I was wondering at first if when you started saying like an old woman and like queen of science, etc., I was like, is this going to be in like Mary? No, like, it is actually so initially. So Marie Somerville look up Mary Somerville. Yeah, so I've sent I've sent a Wikipedia article. So she actually did tons of stuff. She basically was um, one of the first two women in the Royal Academy, who was actually allowed in as a scientist, and she did tons of stuff. Um, and actually, her initial forays into the magnetic properties of violet rays of the solar violet rays of the solar spectrum uh, was one of the only theories that she ever had that did not hold water. But it's the one that she's very well known for. For, for believing that um, basically the solar spectrum was magnetic and th things like that, and that you could use magnets to affect it. Mm -hmm. So having her chase that dream even post-mortem uh, inside of your head definitely seemed like a good a good angle to take for a very like etherite, like, you know, Don Quixote style of, of science. Mm -hmm. 
So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope that anybody listening enjoyed that too. Yes, I enjoyed that you played on her phobia. Yes, uh, which you may buy off for two x or for twice its value in XP if you'd like. Okay. Uh, I also strongly suggest uh, that you consider looking at your nature, and perhaps changing your nature. Okay. Because right now you have Rogue, and I think there are a number of them, anything from Innovator to Mad Scientist, that might be a little more toward what she's trying to become. And I feel that after leaving her her Fair. husband and the union and kind of going yeah, out her on her own. demeanor is Innovator. Yeah, so uh, she could even switch them around and have Innovator be the, be the truth. But look at what you think her her nature should become because I think that between the seeking and all the life changes I think she's going to undergo a bit of a metamorphosis okay that makes sense yeah I think that your avatar will require that um okay but yeah uh, I hope you had fun yeah (laughs) oh that was really good I really right. enjoyed so, that. Uh, folks, that's going to be it for this seeking. I hope that you enjoyed listening to that. And we will be back um, when, uh, we'll be back with session zero of book two on Saturday, the 15th of April. So hopefully you'll join us for that. Thanks for listening. Bye, everybody. Bye.